In this strategy segment, we are going to be discussing three tips to help you crush with suited connectors. Suited connectors should make you a lot of money. In fact, any hand you put money in with, except for when you're in the small blind or big blind, should make you money. Otherwise, you should just fold it. That said, many small stakes players make so many blunders with suited connectors that these hands become unprofitable for them, and that is a disaster because these hands are super profitable if played well. So in this strategy segment, I'm going to give you my three best tips to help you stack your opponents more often with suited connectors. You're going to learn how to play and how not to play them before the flop. We're also going to discuss some huge mistakes to avoid post-flop. And finally, I'm going to give a few more tips for live cash games and tournaments. So let's get right to it. You should stop thinking about suited connectors as either good hands or bad hands because it, it depends on the stack depth and the situation. For the most part, when you're playing short stacked, suited connectors are not good hands. They're not playable in a lot of scenarios. Whereas when you're deep stacked, suited connectors are excellent hands. And this is purely due to the implied odds they can realize. The implied odds are the amount of money you stand to win on the later betting rounds when and if you make a strong hand. As you can potentially win more money from your opponent, suited connectors go far up in value because when you make a straight or flush, it's usually a very, very good hand and you're happy putting in as much money as reasonably possible. If you're only 20 big blinds deep, though, you can only win 20 big blinds from your opponent. If you're 100 big blinds deep, though, you can win 100 big blinds from your opponent, which means suited connectors and small pairs, to be fair, go up in value as your stack gets deeper and deeper. Let's take a look at some preflop ranges. Here is our low jack raise first in range. This means it folds to us as if we were under the gun with six players at the table. Here are the hands we should raise when we're playing 20 big blinds deep. Notice, 8-7 suited is played. 7-6 suited is played every once in a while, but 6-5, 5-4, 4-3, 10-7, these hands are simply not played. Also notice, the small pairs, 4s, 3s, and 2s, are just folded 20 big blinds deep from the low jack seat. Let's take a look at your 80 big blind raise first hand strategy, though. Now you'll see hands like jack-8 suited start to be played. 8-7 suited is played, 7-6 suited is played every time or close enough to it. 6-5 suited is also played. So from the low jack seat, you get to play a few more suited connected hands. And your range is actually going to include more and more suited connected hands proportionally as you get in later and later positions. Also notice 4s, 3s, and 2s can play whenever you are 80 big blinds deep from the low jack, whereas they cannot when you are 20 big blinds deep. Okay? Suited connectors go up in value as you get deeper stacked. Next, let's take a look at what you should do when you are on the button facing a raise from the first position player if there are eight people at the table, under the gun eight, in a tournament. So 20 big blinds deep, button versus under the gun eight, raise first in. Notice you should be folding the vast majority of suited connectors. Notice. 9-8 suited, 8-7 suited, 7-6 suited, 6-5 suited, and 5-4 suited. Call sometimes, but fold sometimes. And the suited gappers and 4-3 suited are folding every single time. Notice again, 4s, 3s, and 2s are folded some portion of the time as well. These are not great hands. However, for playing 80 big blinds, button versus under the gun 8 raise first in, so same positions, notice now a whole lot of suited connectors get to either call or re-raise. Hands that were not played before include jack-8 suited, 9-7 suited, 8-6 suited, 7-5 suited, 6-4 six, six, suited, and 5-3 suited. All these hands get to call a preflop raise on the button. A lot of people don't do this. They fold the weakest ones like 7-5, 6-4, and 5-3. Notice 4-3 suited and 3-2 suited still do not play. These are not especially good hands. They make bottom pair bad kicker and bad flushes and bad straights. Those are not particularly great hands. So you'll find the absolute weakest connect suited connectors do end up folding. Also notice that hands like 9-5 suited are not called. Some people call any suited hand that can make a straight flush, but that is also a mistake. These hands are just not quite good enough to call. So anyway, you do get to play these suited connected hands facing a raise 
in position when you're deep stacked because you're going to have very good implied odds and when you're playing 80 big blinds deep, whereas they do not get to play 20 big blinds deep because you are not going to have very good implied odds. Okay? If you have any questions about preflop strategy, we have the Poker Coaching app. You can download it. We also have the charts on our website, and they will show you how to play lots of common spots when you're before the flop. So make sure you reference those, and you will see this pattern of playing more suited connectors as your deeper stack happen over and over and over. All right, let's talk about post-flop. When you are deep stacked, you typically want to have equity when you are bluffing, meaning you want to have some sort of draw. Suited connectors are great hands to do bluff. Great hands to bluff because they typically draw to straights and flushes, which are very, very good hands when you do make them. So you're going to find that being aggressive lets you steal the pot from your opponents when they don't have anything good, while still being able to outdraw them and get there and win a whole lot of money when they happen to call you. So if they fold, great, you win. If they call, fine, you can either bluff them later or you can get there and win a bunch of money. Let's take a look at some examples. Here we raise it up with nine, eight spades, big blind calls, king, six, five, opponent checks. We have backdoor flush draw and a gut shot and two over cards to the six. Just in case the opponent does have a hand like a six, we can get there with a nine and play a medium pot. So this is a great spot to bet. If we get a seven, we can win all a ton of money. And if we get a spade, we can easily keep bluffing. We can keep bluffing on a lot of turns, to be fair. And if we get a nine or an eight, we can check it down. So this is an excellent spot to make a continuation bet. Opponent does call, turns it to a spades, and they check. Anytime there's two flush draws on the board, you're going to find that you typically want to use somewhat big bet sizes. When I say big, I mean over the size of the pot a lot of the time. We discuss this extensively in the Cash Game Masterclass at PokerCoaching.com, so check that out. So big blind checks, and we bet $55 into the $35 pot. You may say, but when you get called, you're going to be in bad shape. Well, first things first, we have a flush draw and a gut shot, so we can't be in that bad of shape. And also, if you put yourself in your opponent's shoes, a lot of people will even start folding out a bad king in this scenario. They think, well, you know, I got king eight. What am I going to do? I guess I have to fold because I don't want to call here and then face an all-in on the river. And if you can get your opponents to fold out a king, obviously this is fantastic. They do fold. We move on. We move on with our life. The great thing about this play in general, by the way, when there's two flush draws available, is that you're going to have a lot of hands that naturally want to bluff. And... I think you're going to find a lot of your small stakes opponents really do tighten up in this spot. Also, a lot of your small stakes opponents are going to check raise every premium hand on the flop, meaning the best hand they can have at this point on the turn is something like, well, they could have king two or I suppose six two or five two suited, but those are unlikely. And they're usually going to have something like king jack and worse. And there's a whole lot of worse hands than king jack, so you're going to be able to make them fold a large chunk of their range with this turnover bet. Take a look at another one. Five four of hearts. We raise it up, playing 100 big blinds deep. In the cutoff, big blind calls, ace, 10, 2. They check. This is a great spot to bet with our gut shot and backdoor flush draw. We bet 20 bucks. They call. Turns to eight of hearts. Another excellent spot to keep bluffing. If we did not get a heart on the turn, we might just give it up in this spot. It's kind of easy for the opponent to have an ace or a 10 that just isn't going to fold. Typically, when you do bet the flop with a lot of gut shots, and notice on ace, 10, 2, there actually are a lot of gut shots in our range. You're going to want to keep betting on the turn when your gut shots pick up flush draws or open-ended straight draws. So this is a spot where we may not keep bluffing if we didn't get the hearts. Anyway, we do get the hearts, so we're certainly going to keep bluffing. And if we do bet this turn and get raised, we can actually call and try to get there, right? So we do go for a bet. We bet 75 bucks, pretty big, on a board that is very dynamic, meaning the current strong hands on the flop, or turn in this scenario, like ace-jack, if those hands are somewhat likely to get a whole lot worse on the river... Usually you want to be betting big because when you have a hand like ace-jack, you don't really care if your opponent, opponent folds out a hand with equity. And when you do have a hand like our draw, we obviously don't care if the opponent folds. It's a little bit different if the board already has a straight or a flush available. Typically in those scenarios, you want to be using smaller bet sizes in general. That's beyond the scope of this video though. Anyway, we bet 75. If the opponent rips it all in here, we'll have to fold. They do call. Rivers a three. Opponent checks. How much should we bet? We have $390 behind. Take a second. Think about it. The answer is all in. This is an excellent spot to go all in. We have the nuts. When you have the nuts, those are usually very, very good hands to shove with. 
And it's also really, really good to shove in spots where we have a lot of potential bluffs. So we have some nut hands. In this scenario, something like ace, eight, and better is probably good enough to shove, maybe even a little bit wider, depending on the opponent's tendencies. And then some junky busted draws. Those are also really good to shove. When you have something like ace, eight, or better, your opponent's going to have some worse hands that just can't fold, like their two pair. And when we shove and they have a hand like ace, jack, if we can make them fold that, or you know any, any made hand, really, that's obviously a huge success whenever we're sitting here with a hand like 9-7 or something like that. So this is a great spot to go for the shove. Uh, we are going to get a decent amount of folds here, maybe exploitatively against your specific opponent. If you can look and tell they have a hand like one pair and they're going to fold it to a shove, maybe you want to bet more like $180 or $150 in this spot. That could be fine exploitatively. That said, this is definitely a spot you want to shove in general. Do not make the mistake of betting tiny, like $30 into the $200 pot. That's just leaving a ton of money on the table. A lot of people make that blunder. In position, you should basically never bet small, at least from a GTO point of view. We go all in. Opponent calls. We have the ace three. Unlucky for them, lucky for us. And we win a nice pot. Notice though, if the river was a blank, this might be a hand we actually do want to shove with some portion of the time, right? Given we have the five high. And if they do have ace three, and let's say the river's a seven or a nine or a jack or a queen, and we shove, they're probably going to fold, right? It's a pretty strong play. Wins the pot a ton of the time. Next, do not pay people off with marginal hands. Suit connectors are excellent because they make straights and flushes, but they also make weak one pair hands quite often. And if you want to maximize your profits and crush your opponents, you have to recognize that your marginal hands want to play small and medium pots. And if your opponent wants to load the money in the pot, you got to find folds with hands like middle pair, bad kicker. Let's look at some more examples. Lojack raises it up. We call on the button with seven, six of spades, which is perfectly fine. We flop a pair and a flush draw. Lojack bets. Some people think they want to raise in this scenario, but absolutely not. If we raise in this scenario and get re-raise, it's terrible. If we raise and get called, we're going to be against a whole lot of queens and jacks and better flush draws which is also not good. So just call, just call, play a medium pot. Turns a five, opponent bets again. For them to keep betting again, they are announcing very clearly that they have a strong made hand or a high equity draw. If they have a strong made hand, do we want to load money in the pot? No, because they're not going to fold. If they have a draw, do we want to load money in the pot? Well, you know, you wouldn't mind it, but the problem is, is they're going to have a lot of strong hands here. So we just have to call. Rivers of two, they bet a hundred bucks. This is where a lot of people make a mistake. They think, well, I have a pair and a flush draw. How could I possibly fold that? You got to realize on the river, we have third pair and it's not a good one. This is just a fold. And we should actually be pretty happy with this result. We got to see the river very cheaply in a spot where the opponent has now put in a ton of their money. If we would have gotten there, we potentially would have won a lot of money and realized our implied odds very well. But here we have nothing. Just fold. Fold and move on with your life. Do not feel inclined to pay off your opponent. People say, but I don't know what they had. Yeah, you don't know what they have. It's okay. It's okay to fold and not know what your opponent has in exchange for 33 big blinds or any number of big blinds, really. Let's take a look at another one. We have a low jack raise, a high jack call, a button call. We call the big blind with 6-5 suited. We check the flop of 10, 8, 5, 2 diamonds, 1 heart. $15 bet from the low jack. Call from the high jack. Button folds. What should we do with our bottom pair? Bad kicker. Just fold immediately. Just fold immediately. You have to realize in this scenario, yeah, we have a pair. Our six is probably live. But you have to realize sometimes it's not. Sometimes someone's got nine, seven, and we're going to lose a bunch of money when the six comes. Or they already have 10, eight, or pocket tens, or pocket eights, right? And if we get a five, yeah, we almost always have the best hand. But there's no guarantee we're going to be able to load a lot of money in the pot if we do get a five. Because it's kind of obvious if we lead that we really like our hand. And if we check raise, it's kind of obvious we really like our hand into multiple people. And they're probably just going to let it check through on a five anyway if we check. So this is a spot where you just let it go. I realize we're getting good odds, but out of position in a spot where we could already be in bad shape. Well, we already, we already are in bad shape, but if we improve, we could still be in bad shape. This is just a spot to let go of your hand. A lot of people think, well, we're, fa we're getting really good odds. We're probably going to get paid off if we get there. But from out of position, you're not going to realize your equity very well. 
because if we do not have the best hand here, which we probably don't, well, I'm sorry, if we do have the best hand here, it's not going to check down very often, right? So we really have to improve to be able to put any more money in this pot. And if our opponents are bluffing, they're probably going to keep betting the turn. So we're going to end up um, having to fold out our bottom pair. And uh, so it's not a good spot. Let it go. Let it go immediately. We let it go immediately. They play out the hand. Someone has aces. Someone has top pair. Not shocking, right? This is actually one of the best spots you can hope for. And even then, it's not like we're loving it being out of position with bottom pair. So that's it. Those are three tips to help you crush with suited connectors. Let's recap them real quick. First, play suited connectors when deep stacked. Do not splash around with them when you are short because you completely lack implied odds. Next, bluff with your suited connectors post-flop, especially when you're deep stacked. You want to make sure they have equity when bluffing. You want to be bluffing with them when they have a draw. So be willing to bluff with your draws. Draws love to put money in the pot because they can make your opponent fold immediately. And when you do get called, you can still get there and or bluff later. And finally, don't pay your opponents off with marginal hands like bottom pair or middle pair. You have to get rid of the entitlement that you're supposed to win this pot because you flopped a straight and a flush draw or a pair. Just because you flop a little something does not mean you are supposed to win. Realize they're going to lose some pots and it is A-OK. -okay. Stay fluid, stay open-minded, and play well. Use these three tips. You're going to stack your opponent more often with your suited connectors, and you're going to stay out of trouble in the marginal spots. That's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe button down below. Click the notification bell. And if you like these strategy segments where we discuss specific scenarios and try to give good, actionable tips to help you play these situations well, let me know in the comment section. I read all the comments that come through on the channel. I appreciate all of them. So leave them for me. I appreciate all of you being here. Good luck with your suited connectors. Good luck in everything else in life. And have a wonderful day.